community leaders and town staff for making this possible. My name is Jimmy Stallings and I have the privilege of serving as your mayor. Uh, beside me is Mayor Pro Tem Elton Bond, Town Manager Corey Goodness, and Police Chief Henry King, and all the rest of the council members, which consist of Roger Coleman, Aaron Coston, Craig Miller, and Packney High. I also want to thank each of you, the citizens of Eden, for being here tonight as we come together as a community to discuss the realities of the recent tragedies that our town has experienced over the last two weeks. Most importantly, I want to encourage everyone that we learn from these acts of violence and come together to reflect and provide comfort to one another. This is a time of grieving for so many citizens. However, we will need to look to one another to search for the solutions to end this unwarranted violence in this place that we call home. <laughs> Please keep in mind, although emotions are probably high, this meeting is to be a positive look forward to help provide solutions to the problem that we will overcome. This is not a time for finger pointing or to criticize our police and our administration. That type of comment will not be helpful to this conversation. Again, thank you for being here, and I will call on Pastor John Shannon, pastor of Providence Baptist Church, to lead us in the invocation. Pastor Shannon? Yes, sir. Let us bow our heads to the ground. Eternal mercy of God in heaven, we do thank you for um, another day God you have blessed us to see. We thank you, Lord, for another privilege and an opportunity, God, to just be able to move around. We thank you, God, for this opportunity for our community to come from the different various sections of this little hamlet called Edenton. As we come, oh God, with the intentionality of God to speak to an issue that's um, touching the hearts of all of us as gathered. We thank you, God, for the leaders of our town. We thank you, God, for Pastor Downing for opening the doors of their facility that we might come together, oh God, to um, discuss what needs to be discussed concerning the constituents of this town called Edenton. You've been good to us, God. You've been kind. And Lord, we're thankful. We call on you, God, because we know no other to call on in times like these. We acknowledge you as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, you ask that, we ask God that you would uh, touch us, oh God, which you are already touching us with your hand, but we ask God that you will put your finger on somebody tonight, that we might come up, God, with a good idea that would help this community. God, we're living in times, God, where we're able to put men on the moon. We're able, oh God, to be a submarine that can dive deep. We're able, God, to be a surface ship that can go around the world without, without having to refuel. But we have problems, God, right in our neighborhood, one neighbor loving the other. God, we have problems in our communities, God, where people just seem to not have any value to life. We ask God that you allow us to come together, oh God, only as you can. We, God, we've seen you, God, when people couldn't see, people couldn't hear. You worked miracles and you fixed it for them. You did it way back, God, we know that you can do it again. We ask of God that you go with us, stand by us, O oh God, and keep us only as you can. Help us, O oh God, to grab a hold of the, king, the dream the king had that we might continue to move, not just this community forward, that maybe, God, that this community can be an example to the community all around us, that we might be made that much the better. These things happen, God, when people are shocked. There's a problem with the shooter, there's a problem, problem with the victim, and there's a problem with people all around us. These things used to happen in big cities, but now God, they're happening right in our communities. And we need to be about our Father's business. Go with us, God, stand by us, and keep us on as you can. In Jesus' name, we pray. The people of God say, Amen. 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 God bless you tonight. Okay, at this time, I'd like to call forward uh, the Eden Police Department chaplain down. Good evening to everyone. Evening. And thank you for coming to this special call meeting. Um, to Manager Gooden, to the mayor, to, I probably need a mic. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor, the local city 
city government, to the staff, and to the community. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just here to welcome you and take care of a few household things. Uh, we have people on staff who are standing around. If you need to use the bathrooms, it's right here to your right. A staff member is here. You go out this door and make a quick right, and you're right there to the bathrooms. We're so glad that you are here tonight, and we're thankful. Many of us have heard about the death of Nairi Moore. We were saying that we were hurt. So tonight, we've come together to come about a solution, something that we can do, some way that we can help. We didn't come, as he said, as he prayed, to point fingers. We came to come with a solution. You know, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from God, comes down from him from above. We know that these deaths were not good, nor were they perfect. And because they, that means that they didn't come from God. So if it didn't come from God, we know where it came from. And if it came from there, we're not going to just be able to take care of it on a natural realm, but we are also going to have to, have to take care of it on a spiritual realm. The Bible says where there is unity, there is strength. So when we come together tonight in unity, there is going to be strength. And he also says that where we come together and gather together, God has commanded a blessing. So tonight while we're here trying to take care of this problem, just remember that in our space tonight that God himself has commanded a blessing. Thank you, Mayor, Pastor Shannon, Chaplain Downey, for those passionate and very needed words. I want to also thank the Town of Easton Council for continuing to believe in me as your manager and providing me with the leadership and oversight to manage this town and all of its departments. I want to personally thank the residents for keeping our town special and for reminding us that when there's a need to correct or improve how we function. Tonight, that's a perfect example of how the combination of both of those efforts. I'm very privileged tonight to introduce our speaker, but before I do that, I want to share a couple of items for us to consider when we look back over the past few years. Since 2017, the Town of Edenton's Mayor and Council have been very proactive in its approach and have taken the first major step in the addition of the new police station at 301 North Oakland Street. Shortly after completing that milestone, the administration was faced with the next and newest hurdle with the retirement of former police chief Jay Fortenberry. Once again, the administration responded quickly and secured our next police chief, Henry King. Almost immediately, Chief King began to lead his officers by establishing the importance of training for all officers, including himself, mm -hmm. the importance of using new technology to aid in the investigations, and the development of a mindset that even criminals have rights. Since this time, Chief has sustained our department in the shadows of COVID and during a nas national wide questioning of police tactics. Chief King has faced and adapted to these challenges, continued to push forward and improve law enforcement relationships locally, statewide, and on a federal level. Tonight, I am very honored to introduce Chief Henry King and to hear more of an update from his department. Chief King. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Before I get started, I want to make sure everyone in this room, everyone, if you don't have one, please go get one. I want everybody to have this circle. I'm going to explain to you what this is. So please, if you didn't pick one up, if you have it, just let me know if you don't have it, it's one in the back. I want you to have this. I'm going to talk about it tonight. And I want you to have, just like Pastor said, I want you to have a plan. You take the time tonight when you go home. I'm not going to read everything to you. I'm going to hit inserts up tonight. But you take the time to read this plan. And if you honor 
this plan, and if we stick with this plan throughout the year, next year, and years to come, we will change Edenton. Because it's, it's written in stone, just like in the Bible. This plan is written in stone, and together we can make a difference and change Edenton, in North Carolina. So, I want to start off by saying this. As your police chief, I am sitting and sad that we had these shootings occur in town. Because I live here. My son lives here. My wife lives here. We travel up the same road, Dr. Martin Luther King Avenue, where these incidents have occurred in. So I fear for my family just like you fear for yours. I want this change. The, the, the lady that was shot this last week, which is it's the same age as my mother, that hits home with me. So I want you to know that no, we don't tolerate this. But this, the situation that I want to speak to everybody in this room is perception versus reality. Perception versus reality. For some reason, the citizens believe that nothing happens in Edenton, and that is not the truth. That is not, that is far from the truth. If your wife asks you to buy her a Louis Vuitton pocketbook, and, you, and it costs $2,000, but you only got $500 in your bank account, can you buy that pocketbook? No. No. Where I went all the way back to 2015, but, I just, but, but tonight I'm going to talk about 2017 up until now. Back in 2017, Edenton had 20 shootings. 20 shootings in Edenton. Okay? Back in 2018, Edenton experienced 11 shootings. Back in 2019, Edenton experienced only two shootings, one of them being a murder at White Castle or Battle Road. And guess what? We was able to solve that, that, that murder because the individual stepped up and did what they were supposed to do and talked to the police, the SBI, and we were able to get a conviction in court on that murder. In 2020, we experienced 32 shootings in Edenton. During that time, we started utilizing the technology that, that my town manager is, uh, explained to you where we started getting individuals uh, prosecuted in federal court. Six individuals from this town went federal. We started using NIDA, we started calling the ATF, we called everybody that we can, we phoned every friend that we could phone. It happened in Eaton, 32 shootings. <laughs> 2021, we had 19. With one of them being a murder on Cabrera Street. And again, because of technology and a citizen doing the right thing, we were able to put those two individuals in jail away in prosecutions. They haven't been in court yet, but they're still in jail pending prosecution. 2022, we had 12. And yes, we started off the year already in, in the middle of February with seven. So again, perception versus reality. Now, everyone in this room I'm not going to play on anyone's intelligence, but the CDC has said that gun violence, not AIDS, not the COVID, gun violence is an epidemic in the United States of America. And it's ranging between, and it's, and it's ranging between the ages of 18 to 28 of young black males from our community. These issues that we're having in our community is because somebody from the east side don't like somebody from the west side. Somebody made a video taunting the other side in the video, and then all of a sudden, instead of having a sit-down conflict resolution or going to your local pastor and talking it out, they just had to pick up a gun and go shoot somebody's house or go shoot an individual. So tonight, what I want to talk about is this circle that I got from Mr. Nicole Jackson. I don't know if she's here tonight, but, but I want to talk about this circle in two phases. If you look at the circle, it talks about our youth in the middle. That's where it starts at our youth. And if you look at it, it talks about the youth's family. It starts at home. I'm not at home with your kids. I'm at home with my kids. I can only, I can only influence my son the best of my ability, because we all know the saying that we, we can't say what our child won't do when they ain't around us. But we can raise our child the best of our abilities. The next step is other natural supports, neighborhoods, community volunteers. Everyone in this room, help raise a child, take some village, it's in the Bible. Churches, faith-based, community supporters, social service, public schools, 
counselors, juvenile services, probation, and then, as you can see, when it finally makes it to law enforcement, they have had all the chances that they needed, and now we're going to deal with them the way we should deal with them. And nobody should be upset because they had ample time to fix the problem. That's what it takes for our town. Now, for these individuals running around here that's wrong, that shooting up stuff, we got a whole different committee for them. And the committee that I would like to have is myself, Sheriff Bassnight, Dwayne Goodwin, our Trumpet Courts, Probation Parole, and our uh, ADA, Alexis Massengill, to sit down in the group monthly, identify the top 10 individuals of Eaton, send them target letters to let them know that you have been identified as a problem in this community. And if you do anything wrong, we're going to make sure that we prosecute you to the fullest, to where it's no, we want no plea deals, we want off or nothing. And that's what it's going to take. But it's also going to take for the community, when you see these videos that they're posting, because I don't have, a, I don't, I don't have NYPD staff where I have crime analysts that's out here on different websites every night checking this thing. But when you see these videos and you see them taunting other videos, call us. Tell us about it. Because I guarantee you, we're going to go see them and we're going to go see the people that they were talking to let them know that we see the, we saw the video, you're on notice, and you're on notice. But we need your help. Every case that we have worked, that we have got individuals arrested for, either it was video, or my officer stopped the car for a tag light being out, we smeared marijuana in the car, and we got a gun off a convicted felon. Now, I'm going to talk about the ABC store shooting that happened in 2020. I'm sure most people in this room remember that shooting. Well, I'm going to share with you the shooting because it's over with now and it's been convicted in court. When that happened, had the ABC store not had cameras, my police department would have never solved that case. I can tell you why. Because when the individual left from the ABC store, they went to their house. Then that, it, that, that car, same car came to my police department and tried to report the shooting at the ABC store, but the person that they tried to report it wasn't in the vehicle. But because we had cameras at the ABC store and on Johnson Street, we were able to put the pieces to the puzzle together. And the reason why I say that if they didn't have cameras, because in any investigation, if you're on camera, whether you're a witness or the suspect, we have to interview everybody, correct? Well, we went to go interview an individual that we saw in the ABC store, Brian Crown Royal. That, that's how I, I, I know it still, Brian Crown Royal, paid with his credit card. When me and the ATF went to go interview the individual, he said, that wasn't me. I said, what? He said, that wasn't me. I said, that's, that's not me. I said, well, they used your credit card. That was, well, somebody must have used my credit card. I don't know who used my credit card. The mentality of not wanting to get involved needs to stop. The mentality of worrying about somebody calling you a snitch needs to stop. Because if it don't stop, all we are doing by not telling is empowering these individuals more and more. It's got to stop and it needs to end today. You need to talk to your kids, your grandkids, your friends. It is time to tell. Now I tell the council right here all the time. I say it to them, they'll tell you. They, they have a strong initiative. They want a crime-free community. I will make my staff and I, we work very hard to complete that. But I must be honest with them, I say all the time, if you live in a town or a city that's, that, that, that's crime free, let me know. I want to move there. Because everywhere has crime. And our place is no different. But we work hard, but we need the community's help. And we're getting that. For some reason, if we, uh, if we post on Facebook, we're looking for an individual that stole from Dollar General, oh, our emails are flooded. When that, that's who this person is, this who the person is. Well, let's do the same thing for these shootings. Because I know these individuals are out there the night of the homicide that saw what happened. I know that, but instead, we were told, get the F out their yard, get the F out their face, and go do our effing job. That's exactly what we was told at the scene. Not only my staff, FBI agents from Raleigh that are trying to come down here and help us. And this is how we treat people that are, when we're trying to help people. And we're going to continue to help people, and we're going to continue to investigate the case and other cases. But this is what we're getting in real time. So what I'm asking the community to do tonight is to read that plan, let's stick with this plan, let's get the individuals involved monthly, let's meet, let's get the individuals identified, and let's not
feel sad for them if they wind up messing up. Now, if they don't mess up anymore, it's great. I believe in second and third chance because my dad always told me, because he's a pastor, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. I believe that. I truly believe that. But you're not going to keep shooting up my town, I promise you that. But I need a community's help. Now, as a police chief, whatever comments come tonight, I'm going to take it right now. I'm willing to take it. But at the end of the night, all I want from the citizens of Eaton is to go out and reach and tell your grandchildren, your sons, your nephews, you know that Ray Ray out here doing bad. Correct, Ray Ray. You know that. Stop turning a blind eye. Be the mother and the father and the aunt and the cousins that's going to say, you know what, if you don't want to live your life right, and I know you out here in these streets, I'm going to have the police lock you up. I tried to help you get a job. Regulated Marina, Peter, uh, Jimbo, Jumbo's hiring every day. You don't want to get a job? Then I'm going to have the police lock you up. So all I'm asking is for us to pull together. I expect this room to be more packed tonight because I really want our community to understand that we can do it if we work together. Now, I will tell you this. If you can afford it, because I know times are tough, food is high, eggs is $9 for, for a dozen, but if you can afford it, everybody in, in Eden needs to uh, purchase some type of video surveillance for their homes. Point it towards your house, out towards the streets. Because there's so many times that it's something like that that help us make a difference in the case. Share it with the police department. We're not asking you to get, uh, that you that we want to see inside your house. We just be willing to share it. Email us and say, hey, I just got a new blink system. Or I got a new wires. I got whatever. Uh, it's pointing towards the streets. It's pointing towards my driveway. If something happens in the 500 block or whatever road, give, give us a call. We're happy to share it. Please do that. It makes a difference. But at the same time, I want to give you a, a realistic answer. The ABC store had cameras. Did it stop that shooting? No, it did not. People have alarms in their house. Has it stopped people from still breaking in your house? No, it does not. But it's a tool that can help bring this individual to justice. But the best thing, the better than any camera or anything else, is a nose and navel. <laughs> a nose and navel. If you can be a nose and navel, you can be the best friend in the world. Tell you what time to leave, what car you got in, what they was dressed, who they was with. So I'm not going to prolong this, but I really want everybody to study that plan and, and be impactful. You know, I, I see the Know Your Neighbors over here. I'm going to use them for an example. They came to me and they came to the town and they, and, and they put together a neighborhood meeting and they was doing a whole lot in the community. And all of a sudden, people stopped coming. Things were going, and things were going good. It was quiet. It was. It was quiet. That was right there. I showed you. It was quiet. And people just faded off. We came forward, ladies and gentlemen, tonight to start this. Six months later, eight months later, we haven't had anything because the data shows it. We can go up and down, and then everybody faces off. We got to be continuously, just like we live every day. Nothing changes. We got to send a message to anybody. If you come to Eaton and you mess up and I see you, you're going to get locked up. I'm going to be in court. If you are, a, if you are someone that, that, uh, that owns a business and your, and your uh, subordinate is a, is a witness to a crime, you got to work with them at work because we know how the court system works. Not their fault. They go there, they get a continuance. They come back, they ask if, if they want to hire an attorney or get a court appointed attorney. So they got a second continuance. Then they decide to get a court point and turn it on a high one. They're going to get a third continuance. Then the fourth time, the lawyer has a superior court case. So they're going to get a fifth continuance. Be patient with your employees. Allow them to go to court so we can get the individuals out of our community. Support them when they have to go to court. I digress. Thank y'all very much.
great job and we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the council remarks. If any of you up here want to make Sorry, I stand in that question. Okay. Chief, I just, I just want to say, uh, I want to thank you for your, your leadership and direction uh, that you brought to the Eaton Police Department during the past five years. And I will, I'm speaking for myself, and I also speak with the rest of the council. We definitely uh, endorse and support you and, and the department. Anything we can do to further uh, continue your efforts in improving the police department. We are here for you. Just have a, a question. Do you think you need more security cameras in town? Councilman Miller, I will never turn down more cameras in town. The more cameras in town, the better. However, I just want to be clear to the citizens that again, Cameras does not deter crime from happening, but when most times when people know that they're on camera, they tend not to commit crimes. We do know that. But yes, sir, if uh, more cameras, I would never turn them down at all, sir. One more question. Do you have, do you feel you have adequate police staff? No. Well, I hear in the crowd that say no. I have 16 on staff, um, and I have three in field training. They'll be out of training in May. They'll be right by themselves. And I have two older ones. Now, 18 men or 18 minutes slash women is enough to police eat to. But however, if I were to add three or four more to my police department, that would give me individuals that can directly work nothing but drugs and gangs. Because right now we do everything. You know, I don't have a specialized unit. I don't have this and that. You know, so yes, sir. Thank you, Chief. I think we can all agree that the uh, town has worked very hard to make resources available to you and the police department to try and keep our citizens safe. I'd like to raise this issue. And looking at some of the statistics about our town, the uh, University of North Carolina has put out a report that shows that we have 168 young people who live in Edenton who are neither in school nor working between the ages of 16 and 24. 168 young people, 16 to 24, not in school and not working. It seems to me until we can begin to more adequately address the needs of that group, we will continue to have violence in our community because while some of these young people might be doing very positive things, if you're not doing anything, the chances of ending up in trouble are a lot larger. So uh, my question is, how do we begin to make a transition in our community between detention and moving toward prevention? 168 young people, I think, are asking that question. Councilman. Councilman Cole, that's a good question. And it goes back to what I mentioned earlier about the CDC saying a gun epidemic is, is a crisis. Just last night, there were four young black males shot. And the sister parenthood, we have Tyler Run here, but that sister parenthood is Walker's Landing. 16, 17, 20, and 21 years old. That was Lister City last night, about 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock last night. So what we're looking at, again, going back to the circle, to answer your question, the law says you, you can drive out of school at 16, but somewhere the system failed. I say the system, I'm talking about home, Parents, church, school, the whole gamut. And I don't know what that answer is as far as how can we in Edenton, except for come together, identify individuals, utilize the programs and resources that we have to bring these individuals back into the, uh, the fold to do what's right. But we have to stay on top of it and we have to work together, which means we have to meet regularly. We have to have pastors and clergy that's willing to open up their doors, mentors. We have to have people that's willing to come and teach these kids. Because some of them probably were struggling in school and they dropped out of school because they, didn't, they couldn't afford a tutor. And there's so many variations or scenarios that reason why they went from 16 to 24 not doing anything. And that's 
me as an individual, we need a lot of psychologists, to, uh, psychologists that are in here examining our kids. Because we don't live in that environment. Now I'll mention this, even to this five square miles, f five square miles, okay? Five square miles, ladies and gentlemen. But, when, but when, I, when I told you about those shootings earlier, and I listened to them, I mean, I told you how many of them we had per year, they all, they all generated within that one square mile of Edenton. The same locations. It's one square mile. But to get back to your question, Councilman uh, Colvin, I don't have an answer to that, but it takes doctors, um, social workers, clergy, individuals willing to come in there and see why we can keep these kids from dropping out of school from, at the age of 16. First and uh, most importantly, I would like to thank everyone uh, that's here tonight. Uh, to me, if you're here, that is a sign that you're concerned, and if you're concerned, that means you care. And if you don't care, there's no way, and if we don't care, there's no way that we're going to solve this problem. So I would like to thank you uh, for your community uh, presence here tonight. Uh, I think it speaks volumes that we do have people in this community that care about this problem. Uh, one thing that I would like to encourage everyone to do, and I've gotten several emails over the last two weeks that have done just this. Um, we don't have the all the answers. Uh, we don't claim to have all the answers. In fact, uh, we're just as frustrated uh, as you are that we don't have enough answers to this problem. So if you have any ideas, uh, no matter how simple, if you think it's a silly idea, please pass that along to us. And it might be something that we've not thought of. So by your participation tonight, I'd like to invite you to further participate and if you have that idea, please pass it along, and I promise you we will listen. Uh, a lot of people don't believe it, but we've got an outstanding chief of police here in Edenton. He's done an outstanding job. A lot of new technology. He's asked to town to get from them. We've got it. When a shot is fired, he don't have to wait for anyone to call him and let it know it was fired. The technology will let him know where the shot was fired from and all these cameras we've got. He's doing a tremendous job, but like the chief said, he needs the help of the community. If anything happens in your community and you know about it, you need to let him know, because we need to get those people off the street. We need safe streets, safe communities in Edenton. Because it's no fun going at home when the sun goes down and locking your house up. Even though, like you said, you got cameras and alarms and all this, a burglar told me one time there's no burglar alarm that he can't get by. There's no security camera that he can't get by. He said, you put them out there for folks that want or thinking about breaking in, but for a thief, he can get by. And he proved it to me. It's true. It's true. It's true. So let's come together as a town, as communities, as individuals, and work with the police department and try to solve this problem that we've got. Because we've got a great problem here in Houston of all this shooting going on, people getting killed, folks scared. Edison is a sweet little town, and we need to keep it sweet and get rid of all this crime and stuff. Thank you, Chief. Uh, keep on, keep on. I have two questions, but one really. Um, some of the initiatives that we're highlighting here for us, I have a question about. Um, so some of the technology that we purchased, for instance, the uh, security cameras and the shots fired system and the license plate reader. Could you uh, inform the public on the success of that? Or you know, if there's additional that you're needing, you can tell us why and where? 
Okay, so let me tackle your first question. So your first question is, explain to the public about this, uh, the Kuta threat detection software, license plate readers and the cameras, correct? Correct. Okay. Well, the first purchase that we had was the Kuta threat detection, well, backup. The town had cameras, and, the ca and we added more cameras, and the cameras paid off. The cameras, um, when, when we had incidents happen, being these, breaking the inner, excuse me, or hit and runs, or accidents, uh, what, what both parties said, they, they had the red light, the cameras helped out. The Kuta threat detection, what that did, especially for Edenton being on the water, was one, when someone fired a gun, you could be downtown and you think it was coming from Westover, but it's actually coming from Oakham Street. So, so before we got the software, we were going somewhere else and we would never find anything. And the people in, in, in that particular neighborhood wasn't calling because they were subject so much to gunfire that they didn't even call second nature. So that caused us to be able to go to the right location and investigate, collect the shell cases like we're supposed to, and further investigate the shooting. On top of that, the Gucci threat detection allowed us to be able to turn the camera towards the gunshots. So on Halloween of last year, we had a shooting right by the police department. Rested two individuals for less than 24 hours because of the software. But we all know in America that everything that's good for you is expensive, and everything that's bad for you is cheap. <laughs> Bologna is 99 cents a pound, but turkey is 3.99 a pound. <laughs> so unfortunately, when you want to have technology, it's expensive. Now that's something that we can all write Washington, D.C. for. All this technology that can help communities throughout the country costs so much money. And what's your last question? Um, I guess the success of that we've had within the town, we, uh, especially in light of what took place two weeks ago. Yes, we had great success with it. We're still in the trial phase with the license plate readers, but since we had the license plate readers, we have found stolen vehicles. We uh, Today we had a hit and run, and we were able to tell exactly the vehicle that committed the hit and run because it went through the license plate reader. So having that technology, it, again, is a plus. Thank you, Chief. All right, at this time, we'll uh, pass Corey Gooden, our city manager, to make some comments. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Um, just a couple things here in closing before we open up to the general public. Um, we do have a list here um, for public comment tonight, but I want to share a few things. You know, we've, we've, we've spoken about um, where we have came from since 2017, how our town has transition um, its police department as well as the officers and the technology that we've used um, and we've also talked about um, how our community has changed in many ways um, um, some for the better some for the worse um, but I, one thing I want to share is, is is we talk about some of the next steps so what do we do going forward um, to enhance this um, you know, in light of the last three weeks um, they've been very taxing on Chief and myself, as well as, as the residents and, and this entire council. Um, one of the things we've been working on is we've been trying to find what is the opportunity for us to move forward. Um, we do see that there are some additional staffing needs that Chief and I have spoken about. We've already had those discussions with the mayor. Um, you know, we're, we're in that, 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 that real sweet spot for us when we talk about um, our budget plan and as far as what we need going forward. Um, over the last year and a half, I think council has supported us very much where we've identified gaps. I think that's going to continue. Um, we talk about this prime animals position. That's very real. That's something we're very much interested in. Um, most recently, um, the town um, has decided to, to look into a public information officer. That's really to help us with, with being transparent with the community, to provide updates on what all of our departments are doing, including the uh, police department as well as any relevant items um, like the, the newsletters that, that most of the residents are seeing now of what council is doing. You know, we really want to, to open our doors and really show 
um, everything that we're trying to improve. Um, we've also considered additional technology. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of technology there. Um, we have already received additional quotes for additional cameras as well as additional tag readers. Um, we use data to really drive how we do things. You know, my background is an engineer and I can see the value in that and achieve from a statistics level on what we found. Uh, we continue to use data, um, even for policing. Um, you commonly find data used in public works or the electric department. We're finding that. Um, the crime statistics that we have um, shows us where these new tools um, shall be. We're going to provide some updates for opportunities to potential nonprofits and, and, and organizations within our community can better assist us. Um, we, you know, in light of everything that we found, we've been working with our with our AECOM uh, acoustic detection uh, vendors, and they've identified grant funding for nonprofits here to build the system and reimburse these these um, uh, churches, um, any other nonprofits that we have in town to further strengthen our community. We're going to share that information. We are searching for groups now who would be interested in making a financial commitment to help with the idea that there's going to be reimbursement on the back, top, back side. That's going to take a little bit of time. Um, we've also met um, within the last two weeks with other agencies. Um, I think Chief's idea um, for a, a regional task force is something that we're considering. But we're going to start that here in Chowan County um, with our Sheriff's Department and with the EDPD. But we've got to think about, um, you know, really the region that we're looking at. We talked about Washington County. Um, that had one homicide within that 10-day uh, window, those 10 different uh, shootings. Um, one in Bertie, um, three here in Edenton, two in Chowan County, and two in Hertford. Of those nine, the biggest thing that we found was every one of the crimes that occurred that had the public's input, there's been a success story. And so once again, in closing, I really want to urge this community to come together. We do everything we can to try to support this community, and we expect that back. That's a two-way street. So we're going to open up tonight for public comment. I just want to share a couple of things. Just please remember, um, we'll try to answer any questions that we have. And if we cannot answer that question tonight, we will take the time to respond to you directly and try to provide the correct follow-up. If we don't have the answer, we're going to say that. That's, that's only fair. That's only transparent. And also, once again, just to reiterate this, this is time for this group to come together to, to bring us solutions. This is not the time to ostracize this group, this department, because um, I stand behind my chief and this mayor and this council, and um, I think we're heading in the right direction. Thank you for a very inspiring and very noteworthy here. Okay, at this time we'll open it up the floor for public comment. And the first one on the list is Marion Jackson.
She hung up with 911 and immediately called me. That haunts me to this day, knowing already what I have been through as a victim of gun violence. Trusting God and thanking God for saving my daughter, in which if the bullet hadn't faltered, I would have lost her to the senseless gun violence in this town. Mm -hmm. I have been an advocate, I have been a fighter, I have been a reporter of incidents. Things seen, picked up on camera, faces picked up on camera, nothing has been done. That night of that shooting on at Wedgwood Apartments, again, the youngest victim, you guys, seven months old. I was shown that the cameras on that side of town were offline. Why would we need more cameras if we can't even have the cameras that we have now working and operating in our communities to keep us safe? Why are we continuing to spend taxpayers' money to get this equipment where it's not even operable? It's not running. I was physically shown that night. But I will be sending an email and requesting a private meeting with all of you to discuss concerns. Because again, in order to get the resolutions, we got to be able to address the issues at hand. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. So Ms. Jackson, let me answer your question. So that night, I did show you that the cameras were not working because we all going to be transparent here at the Eagle Police Department. But I want you to know that that camera that was not working was not paid for by the taxpayers of the town of Eaton. That camera that was on that pole in Westwood Apartments was owned by Westwood Apartments and they share it with the town of Eaton. Just like the cameras that are in the Housing Authority were bought by Housing Authority, but they were so gracious enough to share it with the town of Eaton and the Eaton Police Department. Now, I knew and have been talking with Wastewood Departments about their cameras and following up with them weekly and monthly. Just, just the other day, because the camera is still down, just the other day, I called the IT guy myself and said, hey sir, what is going on with the cameras at Wastewood and Waterford? He says, they've been given a quote. Exact words, they've been given a quote. Now, I don't know what their financial uh, uh, um, situation. situation is or the checkbook is, but I don't, want, I, want, I don't want you to think that the, the cameras that the town of Eaton owns, that the town of Eaton, that the tax dollars spent, if they go down, which they are, because we all know about technology, we get those up and running as soon as possible. But I cannot control a third party's camera they are not owned by the town, but we have access to them. So I hope that answers your question. Chief, one question for you uh, as it relates to our concern. The cameras that are close to that location, I think we do have a couple that are right there. Were they operable that mm -hmm. as well? Mm -hmm. We only have one camera down the street, which is at MLK and Cox Avenue, and it was operable. But it is, but obviously where the apartment is at, it's not going to catch anything because it, it pans. But yes, MLK and Cox Avenue were very operable. But the Winswood apartment camera, which is owned by Wayswood was not possible. And he has been down, and I shared that with Ms. Jackson and the family that night. So Chief, I got a question. So is the, the area that we're talking about, is that in that one square mile area that, we, that, we, that we're talking about? Absolutely, Absolutely uh, Pastor. Uh, anything on MLK, uh, North Most, the 300 block of North, North Most Street, uh, West, uh, West Carteret Street, First and Johnson, it's all in it, with that one square mile. Chief, um, if we can find the funding for it, and I tend to think that we're motivated to find the funding for it, um, can we place more cameras in these hot spot areas that you've told us about? Absolutely. Um, I, I don't know. Um, Councilman Hyde, if this is even, uh, even legal, and I wanted to do it, but I wanted to ask Attorney Hood, since Wedgwood was kind of, uh, I don't want to say dragging their feet, but whatever's going on with the camera, I wanted to replace the camera with us, but it's on their property. 
But yes, we can add more cameras to the other different hotspots because we are a utility company and we, we, we own the post. So yes, we can add more. But Westwood was one of the places where, again, Westwood, Waterford, statistics, we were having problems on it. Tower Run, we were having problems. But guess what happened at Tower Run? They got a new management, they invested in the best uh, camera system you could ever think of, and they started putting people out who didn't want to follow the rules, and boom, the problem was gone. When Battle Road, White Castle, got a new owner, and he set the tone out there, and he put people out, and he invested in his own camera that he shared with the police department, boom, we stopped going out there. It, again, it takes a village, it takes good management, but we have to hold people accountable. And I'm sorry, Ms. Jackson. I'm sorry that camera wasn't working that night. I knew about it. But I can't control the others' actions. Chief, it might be not worthy to say that, you know, we're looking into, we're pricing to buy 10 more cameras at this, at this time. Yes, and Ms. Jackson, one extra thing to add here that we haven't shared, um, you know, these cameras and these shock protection <coughs> acoustic sensors that we have, these are $13,000 a piece. So the reason I say that is, is we know that's a, that is a hard ask for us to approach you know, nonprofits or uh, when we expand. I mean, 10 of those, that's $130,000. So one option that I wanted to share with the public tonight, the Chief and I have had some um, um, very early on conversations is, there is a software system that we have found, regardless of the camera system, that these properties may have that may be a, a lot more financially responsible for them to have something that's a, a, a little more, uh, you know, price where, where they can afford those. So we're actually looking into this fusion system and we're going to encourage these, um, these complexes as well as these businesses because this new software will allow us to basically expand with the existing camera system that these locations have and they are integrated as part of our camera system. So we would know more quickly when Wedgwood or when Tyler Run would have camera systems down. And this is, is, is not something that we're asking them to buy. This would be a subscription base that we would basically absorb what they have. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question. We're talking about the cameras. Does shot, would you say shot protect, detectors? Were they not working? That, are any on that side of town as well? Yes, we, we, we received the alert. We were on Jackson Street. We received the alert. We were in route. But the camera, the, ca the, sh the, shot, the sensor turns the camera in the direction of the shots. But the camera, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I just, I just, yeah, I, I asked the question for a reason, but I guess we're not to address the concerns tonight for a town hall that was called for us to be able to discuss this and come up with solutions. So that's why I'm going to ask for a meeting with you all, like uh, the Sheriff's Department and the County Commissioners did give a full meet an opportunity to meet and discuss concerns with them. So I'm going to ask the same of you guys, but I do that in the email. But um, I just wanted to ask about those as well because unfortunately, even during that situation, I was able to come from the county and meet the officers that I was, so and, I was concerned. Yes, ma'am. That's how I'm looking at and, and, and I'm not going to make an excuse, but we were really, literally at an active homicide scene. So that's what took me, because I wanted to make sure that they, that they did everything they're supposed to do over there, and I was in route. So yes, maybe it was a delay, because I wanted to make sure that everything was wrapped up, or not wrapped up, but everything was, that my supervisor was supervising everyone correctly before we went to the next thing. Okay. So with that being said, I would say, and I think somebody touched on that earlier, maybe more officers are needed. Because we, we did shake our hand in the audience when you said something about somebody said something about officers. Maybe we need more officers on duty because you shouldn't have individuals having. You know, if you got a team working on that issue, yes, it was serious, but you also have these other issues happening, which was the right after that happened, and you have no officers over there to secure that scene, and I as a citizen, along with my 70 year old mother, put ourselves at risk to protect our family and the kids. So maybe more officers do need to be hired. Mm -hmm. Ms. Jackson, um, I, that, I would be glad to set that meeting up, and we are looking into what the headcounts need to be. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, next on the list is uh, Adrian Heath.
Um, we have taken a very proactive approach to address some of the, the living conditions. Um, uh, one thing to share with this group is our law enforcement officers are also being trained to address minimum housing issues. We're not only when we go into a house where there may be a, 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 a legal issue there, but also we're focusing on making sure these homes are safe for folks to live in. Ms. Heath, I want to say this. You hit the nail on the head when it comes to our youth. So this is where I'm going to, I'm going to, as a son of, as a son and grandson of a pastor, this is where I'm going to have and hold my clergy accountable. Because the way I grew up, a church, see like church today has been more of a community church, not a community church. People go, people go to the church, but they don't live in that community. We got to, we got the, the clergy got to stand up, and I know you have, but you got to stand up and serve the community where your church is located at. And those youth. So if, if the clergy can, can rally together, and again, identify these youth that are not getting sleep, because Ms. Heath is right in the school system. She can share with the clergy these individuals' names. The clergy can get together and figure out, this is a small town. Mostly everybody probably related around here. So we, if you don't know the person, you probably know their friend or their cousin. So we got to really get involved, and that comes from the, from the community. If those kids are not getting to eat, people are afraid to call social service. Social service doesn't always want to take your kid, but they want to make sure that, that, that the kids get a meal. It may be a parent issue, but we got to utilize the resources that we have and not be afraid and worry about somebody coming and taking your child. Because we're not always here to arrest somebody. We're also here to help. Okay, next is uh, Dr. Darius Horton from Hartford. Uh, good evening uh, to the mayor, the mayor pro tem, members of the council, and to the community at whole. Uh, my name is Darius Horton. I am the senior pastor of White Oak Baptist Church in Tyner, and I'm also the uh, funeral director of Horton's Funeral Home and Cremations in Hereford, North Carolina. Um, and I just recently uh, ended a nine-year tenure on the Elizabeth City Council. Uh, I've come tonight, uh, you know, this is Black History Month, and Dr. King said something so profound that darkness uh, cannot drive out darkness, only light can. Uh, hate cannot drive out hate, only love can. And what the world needs more today is more love. Um, I came here really uh, with one main focus. Uh, I've operated and uh, been the CEO and funeral director at Horton Funeral Home since 2016. And I would say 95% of the murders and homicides here in Chihuahua County at my funeral home has handled those services. And it gives me a different view, a different approach as the individual, the mortician that sees the aftermath of the gun violence, and then the mortician that sits down with these families that are dealing with the fact that their son, their daughter, is never going to walk in that door again. It was just uh, in the past couple of weeks, both the homicides and murders um, that have been spoken about tonight. I was the funeral director for both of those families. And sitting there, even as a believer in Christ, and recognizing their pain, their hurt, the questions, have they failed themselves as parents? <laughs> it's one of the hardest things that anyone can ever do. And I came tonight because, and I really don't have a whole lot of questions, but just points to ponder. One of the things that I would like to see uh, from the police, and I really believe that even though this is a great starting point, um, this should have been a community meeting, the county. I know this is a town council meeting, uh, but this is not just a town problem. This is a community problem. The sheriff, uh, the county commissioners, all of us need to come together to come up with creative ways. Um, it's one thing to talk about it, but we have to be about it. 
And, and I sat with both of those mothers in the past couple weeks. And one of the things that I constantly hear from these grieving families is that there is a lack of communication between the law enforcement and the families that are dealing with the death of these loved ones. There may be no new evidence. There may be no new suspect. You may not know anything. But there needs to be designated individuals that reach out to these families, even if there's not any new information, to just let them know, hey, we're working hard. Uh, you know, we're, we're thinking of you. You know, because a lot of times these families, and this is not a, a attack at any individual, but a lot of times these families tell me, according, we haven't heard anything. You know, we don't know what's second on. We don't know anything. So that, that's a problem, and that's something that we needs to be addressed. Also, you know, I heard earlier we talked about the east side, the west side, uh, the bloods, the crips. You know, we have to work together as leaders to make this one community. There is no side. Uh, the only side should be us working together. And I have a lot of things I would like to say that I am also the exalted ruler of uh, the Elks Lodge on Carteret Street. And if our building can be used to host any type of community functions, uh, that we get people out, we would love to do so. Thank you.
personally, man, I live in Hartford. You guys are a great little town. But if it was me living here, I would be calling for your chief's resignation. Um, as she was blamed and victimized for this, I'm not sure that that is either protocol or understanding from your chief, but I certainly don't appreciate it. So I have some other things I'd like to speak with you guys about, and I'll be glad to sit down with you whenever it's appropriate. So, Ms. Lamb, so the cognitive tire question is we did contact them and we did get the video. We had to wait on the individual to get us the video. Um, so, we got it, we uh, posted a screenshot of it uh, to, and to ask the public if they knew who that vehicle uh, looked up. Then you had a great conversation. Have it, have it, have well, it. It's clearly a Ford Taurus. Yes, ma'am. I, I understand that, and and we are looking for the four tours. There are there are about there are about twenty four tourists in Edenton, just alone, you know. And now and DMV doesn't give us the color; it only gives us the four tours. So we so we going around narrowing down which ones are. It appears to be a white four tours, but at night time with the light, it could be a different color. But we're trying to narrow it down. We, we, we're working on it, and I have spoken to Miss Jones myself. And, I, and just like I spoke to you on the phone and, and giving you the totality of the circumstances. Well, this is not time and place no, I'm to, saying that. to argue with you, and I'm certainly not here to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going on what Charlie Creighton said. So, there you have it. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your input. And trust me, we have heard your, we've heard some very good comments, and believe me, we have heard it. The chief spelled it out. He called it like it is. But what you must understand is we have a limited amount of personnel and can't be everywhere every minute, which is what some people expect the police to do. They, they just cannot do it. We need your help. Please, if you see something, say something. Call the police, call somebody. We see on the news media all the time where if a police officer is present, people have their cameras out filming and help, hoping to catch the police doing something wrong. That in itself is wrong. Isn't it just as important to catch somebody committing a crime as it is to catch the police making a mistake? Seeing somebody shooting someone or shooting up a house or shooting up a car, please, please guys, ladies and gentlemen, we need your help. We need you to see something and to say something. Your comments will be private, no one will know you have spoke to us, spoke up. It will be confidential. So please, again, if you see something, say something. And again, we appreciate all the comments from up here and from out there. I've got one more to add to the record before we close. We, I'd like to share this, and I plan on um, responding to Ms. Jones, Mayor. Um, we, we did accept one um, email that came in tonight to ask the question, and I'll be glad to follow up, but I'd like to share that with the general public as well. Sorry for that. Thank you for, for giving me a chance to, to read this. Um, this is from Miss Julia Jones. I'm um, asking that this is Can you speak uh, it to the back? Uh, this is from Julia Jones. I'm uh, asking that this please be read and addressed at tonight's council meeting. Thank you so much. I come to you today on behalf of myself, my family, and the citizens of Eaton, North Carolina. For years, the Eaton Police Department has been rife with corruption, abuse of power, and impunity. Chief King promised change, but has failed on his promises 
Chief King has worsened the department's problems by undermining basic mechanisms of accountability and civilian oversight. It is clear he does not represent the values and cannot effectively lead the department. I have recently been a victim of violence, whereas not only in my life in danger, but my children's as well. When the chief was told about this incident from the officers that they were called to the scene, he blamed the incident on me and who I associate with or who I did not associate with. What kind of chief would victim blame? I tell you, Chief King, the one that has not protected the citizens of our town, the one that sits behind the desk and points fingers, the one that you only see on social media portraying himself as a good fellow. How many murders have gone unsolved in the past few years? How many shootings have gone unsolved in the past few years? What is being done? We as citizens should be informed. We cannot count on the chief of the police. Then who can we count on? I ask for Chief King's immediate resignation. And this is from Mrs. Julia Jones. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard you, and this is our... Uh, may I ask a question? You may. Uh, in reference to the uh, 168 people, of uh, uh, children, that you were talking about, uh, Roger. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Where did they get, did they get the names of those? No, uh, not that I know. They simply uh, did a thorough study throughout the state of each county, and it's one... Uh, had 168, age 16 to 24, not in school and not working it. I don't know if I can get the names for those or not, but it'd be good to be able to identify that 168. The male opinion. Did not get that breakdown. I haven't gotten the breakdown. They might have it. I guess because you're asking, you know, for us to, you know, see something, if you see something, say something, or to do something, or to uh, do something. Um, if we don't, if we're not aware of those 168 and their situation, and some say they were homeless, not eating, not eating food, and all of that, maybe if we could get some idea of where and who these, these 168 people, students are, maybe some of us would be willing to volunteer to go <coughs> and see if we could meet some of those people, find out the situation, and do something. Okay, I'm going to take one more question. Yes, Speaker. I would like to make a suggestion that rather than just having the police chief, the sheriff, uh, the mayor, and the county, map, all of those, I think you need to involve the school system, mm -hmm. uh, especially the guidance counselors, so we can identify, if we can't identify these 168, we can identify maybe at-risk children. I think that's really important to involve the school system. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Some of the people who are here, you're clearly interested. If you're interested, can we get a sign-up sheet so that people can leave their names, their phone numbers, their email addresses? Because we, this one meeting is not going to do it. We got Missy Harrell, who goes to the neighborhood prayer. There are a number of people here who are already doing things. We've got this young lady here working with Fanny Parker Club. So if we can get a sign-up sheet so that you all can know so when things come up, you can say, Sharon, hey, Roger will call me in a heartbeat beat and say, Sharon, I need you to do this. We've got people here willing to work. We all want to solve the problem. Can we get something on, get, get a sign-up sheet going so that somebody can coordinate and, and get something going? Okay. I've got a question. Stand up a okay. Yes, ma'am. I'll be glad to, to send that around tonight. Okay. We'll have that before uh, everyone leaves at the door. Okay. Facebook, My name is Gloria Wadsworth, and I'm the president of Sisters of Strength. I have a 501 c program. And my, my sisters, those young, young ladies, we do a lot in the community that's unbeknown to a lot of people. And my thing is, with my organization, it's just hard with funds. You write grants, you get turned down, but we need money to help our organization to grow and be able to get funds to help our kids. My goal is to have a home for these kids who 
are homeless. I'm going to place to have these kids to come if they need a bed to sleep on, a kitchen, where they can learn how to cook and clean those basic skills they need to survive and help these children find jobs. But I need money. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Eddie Roundtree, uh, the owner of Needs to Be Clean. I'm probably about one of the youngest ones that's still here. And I listen to all the guys and whatever else. A lot of y'all, a lot of it makes sense. Yeah, we do need volunteers and whatever else. I myself personally, I volunteer every Thursday at middle school. And let me explain something to you guys. I have a teenager. It's a different breed. Yeah. Hold on. It's a different breed. All right. My daughter, that's my little cousin. My best friend, the, the worst thing you can go through is for your best friend to call you crying because their child got shot. And I mean, we, we, we tight. We, we real tight. Like, I mean, that, that hurt me like it was my child. I talked to King a couple times, and I told him straight from down. I said, Lord forbid something happens to one of my kids. And they're not at fault, but we'll burn this town down. And I mean it. And that's no disrespect to him, but I told him that I'm mad to tell him that. You know, I mean, <laughs> every Thursday, we volunteer at this middle school, me and my friends. Their age bracket from 15 to 25, they lost. They lost. I mean, that's the bottom line. Now, my thing is, I've been on that side of the tracks. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I stand up here, business owner, whatever else, you know what I'm saying? I've been on both sides of tracks. I can sit here, I can write a business plan, I can do whatever else. I'd have been in a jail cell, I'd have been in prison time, whatever else, but you wouldn't think that until you sit down and talk to me. So I can talk to these kids on their level, and which a lot of y'all can't. They're not gonna listen to y'all. <laughs> no, I'm just being honest with you. It's a lot of pastors that come in there and they wanna mentor these kids and whatever else. You know the first thing, I'm not going to call about but one pastor came and he said, well, he introduced himself and whatever else. And, um, he said, I'm a, I'm a veteran and um, I'm retired now, this, this, and this. The kids first they asked, well, have you killed anybody? You're talking about 15, 16 year olds. But the thing is, you have to talk to them on their level. Amen. I mean, yeah, it starts at home, but you got to talk to them on their level. You do. We can pray for them. That's, like Grandma said, that's, that's the main thing you got you to pray for. I had a prayer for My mother prayed for me. I still went to prison. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I'm called a spade a spade. Am I ashamed of it? No. But that made me who I am today. I didn't come from a broken home. I didn't come from that side of the tracks. I knew better. But as they say, sometimes you got to let it rub in your face until you see what it is. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm called a spade a spade. I don't care if you defend it. It is what it is. No, I'm serious. These kids is one of two, three, one of three things. They either going to hell, the jail, or to a sale. Between that age of 17 to 25, because they lost. I mean, that's just what it is. We can pray for them, we can do all the community events, whatever else. But I mean, you, I mean, a lot of these kids, some of the ones I did doing all this shit. I mean, I know them, whatever else. One or two of them went to me all day, wash cars, whatever else. I, I bought them back and cleaned this fresh wash stuff, whatever else, to try to help them, to try to, like, look, this is something better. But they don't get it. But the ones from this middle school, fall home, I mean, those are the ones you want to try to touch. Some of these high schools, I mean, when I go to high school talk to these kids, I tell them quick, the, the 11, 12 breaks, these are the last two most critical years of your, your life. Because once you walk across that stage, if you don't got a game plan, the world will help you make one. But I mean, like, I mean, like, like I said, all you do is pray for them, but on the end of the day, I'm going to tell y'all, it's a different breed. Thank you. All right, thank you very much to be now journey.